Welcome, this is 311, Commanding the OS. This is the first lesson on a new unit, Unit 3, about the water treatment facility. Uh, in this lesson, we're learning a lot about the Linux operating system and a lot of our basic commands to, to maneuver around it. Some of these might be familiar too. Uh, your document for this class, uh, we're keeping a running list of commands. I've already done everything for both parts of this video. And then answering some of the boxes as we go through the lesson. But I think this is pretty straightforward. So make sure that you're loading up the lab right now. I'm kind of stalling while we're doing that a little bit. Review that cyber case. Uh, a, a few things about the Linux. So this is a Linux-based operating system. Uh, typically, we've been using Win uh, Windows, right? And, and that's the virtual lab. It's a Windows-based operating system. Linux is a different operating system. And, and one of the things about this operating system is everything's it behaves a little differently. One thing is everything is a file in here. So there's just different types of files. And instead of like having folders and files, well, those folders aren't files. They're just actually called directory type files. But they kind of behave in the same way. So I might be using some different words in here. But hopefully you see a lot of things that are familiar what, with what you've seen in a Windows operating system. A directory is just a special type of file. When you run it, you get to open its contents in there. So it's just like, hey, if I was in Windows and I was opening that file explorer, just moving around in there. Oh, there's still a file system, like a structure. So you might have like your main directory we call Jane Doe, but under there, there's gonna be three folders or subdirectories or directories we'd call them, personal, research, and school. And in those could be directories below that. Needs books, music, whatever. Needs inside of those could be different types of files. They can be just text files. They can be executable files. They can be pictures, whatever. Just like you would on your Windows-based operating systems. But the way we maneuver around this Linux operating system is going to be different because we're going to deal with one that is purely text-based. So everything on there, it's how we maneuver and how we see what's on there is all through text and the command line stuff. So similar to what we did with like PowerShell, where you had to open that up and look through command lines, the operating system is going to look very similar to that. All right. So now that this is loaded up, so, well, it's trying to load up. Uh, one thing that's you're going to see here, just to note that we have the internet, and this is where you're logging into with your PLTW machine. But we're actually going to have to log into like the Linux machine inside of this. So just like in like unit two stuff where we had to like go a level deeper, we're going a level deeper here. All right. So that's, that's the basics on how this works. So just a reminder, like pop up, like this is our file structure that we'd have before. Now you look in your C drive, you can go in different folders and there's files in here, right? Well, it's, it's going to look a little different. And then I can, I can click in files. I can maneuver around all that kind of stuff. But let's do this. So desktop connections folder, double click alpha, double click connections, and we're gonna go to alpha right here. So alpha is gonna be like the login for the Linux machine. And here it is, text. Looks similar to what you did with, um, in the command line stuff or the PowerShell. If I click this, you type it in here, it does a command, right? Or it doesn't do a command. That's kind of how it behaves. Um, so let's learn some commands. Uh, first one is the ls command. I thought we did this one before, but ls command will list everything in the current directory. So if I type ls right here, it's gonna list every folder, file, everything in there. Notice some of these are blue and some of these are white. Blue ones represent directories, so folders, right? White ones represent regular files. They could be text files. Could just, we'll say text files for now. They call it ordinary files in here. I don't know if there's a better name, like miscellaneous, right? I uh, notice in here, you have this like prompt. It says alpha at PLTW. So alpha is your username. PLTW is the name of the machine. And this blue area with the tilde, that represents what folder we're currently in. So we'll, we'll, we'll get more of that later. So add to your command list. I've done that too. I've added a few extra things, but no. I, I'll share this in the video links below. Verify the output. So we already did that. 
and your screen will have a black background. You can switch it different. I don't know if it's white in here. You can probably switch the color somehow. Uh, LS, you can you could just do LS and list everything in there. But let's say I want to list everything in the templates folder. I can go LS and then go templates. And this will list everything inside that folder, new and old, right? So I, I can I can put some, I guess we call it parameters or some other stuff after this LS to say, hey, actually list everything in this directory. No, okay, so there's LS. A new command, CD and PWD. CD templates. CD represents change directory. We used that before. So if I want to move into templates, I go CD templates. A little lag today. And notice I'm now in, it says templates folder because that is the location I'm currently in. And if I say LS, I list that new and old. So CD, change directory, I can move to different folders. All right. You're now in the new directory. Confirm the contents I just did. Uh, and this is the part where I was talking about step 10. So the first part, your username at the machine name, PLTW in this case. It could be like an IP address, I think. That's what they looked like last time we did this in unit two. And then this blue part's the directory. The dollar sign, the colon, the at sign, those just kind of like separate them. So if I said beta at PLTW, beta is the username, PLTW is the machine, and I'm in the documents folder. But what's that tilde actually represent? So the tilde actually represents, that's that squiggly line thing, tilde. It represents like your home directory. It's kind of, they kind of hide it. Um, it's wherever like your your like main directory is stored on the actual computer. Uh, it, it so this could be a like a default spot or whatever. So typically, at least on this machine, it's home slash the username alpha. So if you want to actually see that full directory, we can do pwd, which says print working directory. So if I go uh, pwd from this spot in templates, it's going to say home alpha templates. All right. So instead of saying tilde templates, that tilde actually represents where we start alpha. Alpha, because we're logged in as alpha, and that's alpha's stuff. Now there's a tree structure, most operating systems, that, that picture that we did at the start. Um, but now, nah. so, you know, it's, it's got the parent folder and then subdirectories and so on. Folder, directories, whatever. Uh, CD, we can do some other commands with this. So what if you want to go back up a level? Well, if you do CD and dot dot after that, so CD space dot dot, I think it has to be a space. It'll go up a level. And so now I'm back, notice I'm out of templates and I'm back at the home directory. So the dot dot lets you go up a level, all right? Now, I can also use CD and, and like go two levels deep at once. I don't have to go CD. At, so for example, if I wanna to go to documents right here, I can go documents, CD documents. Oops, CD. Get a little lag here. I think because I'm trying to upload at the same time. I'm on a hotspot right now. Let's say I want to go into a work, right? So I can go in that folder. I'm now in documents work, but that was two commands. And I want to go, I can actually combine that into one CD if I know I know where I want to go. So I can go documents slash work. And that'll jump straight to that folder right there. So you don't need to make it two. You don't need to jump one step at a time to jump. And that even applies to the dot dot thing. So I can go dot dot slash dot dot. And and then pictures. So what each of these dot dot things is gonna jump me back one level, and then pictures will jump me forward. So that well, I'm in documents right here. So if I go CD and I go dot 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 slash dot dot slash pictures. So what this did is it took me back two levels, boom, boom, to the home area, and then it went inside the pictures directory. So you can do that to kind of combine commands. You know, it's you know, you don't have to. You can do that one step at a time if you were really just moving around. But it's a neat thing to like little little shortcut so you're not like doing one step at a time. Up to you. Now, what if you're like in some directory you want to go back to the home? Do you have to do a bunch of dot dots to get back to the home area? No. No matter where you're at, you just type CD blank and it'll take you back to your beginning, the home directory, right? So if you just want to like get back to where you start to the home area, CD teleports you back to the start. And you can confirm. All right. So those are those commands. A cat command and make sure you add them to your list. And I've done that here. Some screenshots. 
however you want to do your notes. All right. Cat command. Cat to concatenate data to the screen. So concatenate means joining character strings. Concatenate usually, when, I, when I'm seeing this in programming, it's like combining two strings. That's what I usually use it like in principles when we're doing programming. But in, in the case for this class, we can also use cat to just print stuff to the screen. So if I'm in my home area and I say cat welcome.txt. So remember, it, we got this welcome.txt thing. We're in the home area right here. If you want to confirm we are, we can list it. And then we can go to cat welcome.txt. And it'll print out whatever's in welcome text. It says, welcome to the explanation of the Unix operating system. I got confused. Like, why does it say Unix and not Linux? I thought we were doing Linux. Linux is a, I was looking this up. Linux is like a Unix based operating system. And uh, I forgot what, so it's like, like the unit. So just think of it as a version of this. So you might, you might see this. I don't know. Someone else probably can explain this better than me. But I know it's like a version of that. Something, something, something along those lines. I was still confused. Someone understands it better than me. If you make a typo in the Unix command, you can usually undo your mistake with Control C. Really? Oh, I didn't get that. So let's say I make a. Oops. Say if I make a typo. Control C. Well, that you can. You'll be stuck in the command. Oh, oh, control C like breaks. Like if you do cat, but you do nothing, so you do this. And like it's stuck because it's waiting for something. It says catenate what? What, bro? But you can go control C to break out of that. Okay. That's good to know. I missed that last time. What if I try to cat documents? Documents is a folder. So if I do documents, it's a directory, excuse me says it's a directory. We can't cat or concatenate a documents or directory. That's not how that stuff works. Now, if you want to print out what is in a directory, there's a command we're going to learn in the second half of this lesson. All right. Uh, now, the last part, step 19, somewhere in the items directory, we're going to use concatenate. We want to find this is this is your little test at the end of this. All right. Somewhere in the items directory, find what is hidden in a box in the trunk of a car. Explore each directory, go many levels down. I'm going to leave this up to you. I don't want to do this one. So you're back at the start. You're, go to the items directory. And you want to look. So you're going to be exploring. Oh, is it items? Oh, LS. You're going to explore. And I want you to try to find the box that's in the trunk of the car. And then uh, figure out what's in the box. What's in the box? Yes. I'll leave that up to you. I don't want to spoil that. Do that on your own. And then I have the second half of this video posted. Thank you. See you later.